All right, I think um, I think we're good to go. And oh, why can I hear myself? I don't think I should be able to hear myself. One second. Can I hear myself? No? Oh, that was weird. All right. Well, I think we're... You hear me? Okay. Okay, that's good. Cool. Um, this... Oh, is this camera? Oh, that might be why. This one's frozen for some reason. All right, we almost had everything set up. Um, face cam, let's deactivate, reactivate. All right, I think we're good. Cool, so I have a slightly different setup going on, uh, mostly because uh, the paper is too large for us to fold <laughs> sitting down. And let me just get my stream opens in case I have to write any chats. And we're like, oh. All right, we'll keep that one there. Don't need to look at it yet. Ah, uh, okay, okay. We are we are good to go, I think. Um, what are we folding? So we're folding that today but we're wet folding a big one so let's put this to the side because it's gonna get in our way and so wet folding we're gonna be using this towel as um our application method and you'll see so if you've never seen something wet folded like this before this is kind of how it's done or one of the ways it can be done uh, but yeah first of all Welcome guys, welcome to the stream. Thank you everyone for hanging out, coming along late at night to check out this wet fold. I think it's pretty exciting. So this model isn't awfully complex, but it's still one of those things where since we're wet folding it with arches, we kind of want to do it all at once. And it takes a lot longer with the thicker, larger sheets. And I hope it's going to be able to be, it should be doable. Um, so let me grab the paper. It's not like abnormally large, but it is pretty big. Um, like, I'm not sure if you can really see how large it is on the camera, but the fact that it's off the screen, maybe that tells you it's pretty big. And yeah, hey, it's our favorite mod. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Um, let me put the chat window a little bit somewhere where I can see it a little bit more easily. I think there you go. Since I'll be standing up um, while or half standing up when doing this, I want to make sure um, I can still read chat. Um, no, this is not going to be a tutorial. Great question. So if you guys happen to be able to fold this somehow, from following this or looking back in the video, um, by all means, that's great. You know, you're skilled enough to translate it, but this is specifically not a tutorial uh, because it is going to be taught at FoldFest 2023. So that's an online origami convention. Um, and I'll be teaching the actual sequence there. So because I'm wet folding it, it's not going to be exact sequence on how I'm going to teach it. Uh, but again, if you somehow figure it out, you know, good for you. Uh, you can count yourself as a test folder, but I will not be walking people through this if say you're trying to, but you get stuck. So that's the expectation I'm setting. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not exactly a tutorial, um, but you'll be able to be taught by me later down the line. If you want to, uh, fold fest, isn't too expensive if you're in like North America and Europe. Um, some other countries, I think the exchange rate gets kind of expensive, but, uh, for an online convention, it's really interesting because there's both classes and lectures. So you can both fold stuff and like learn about origami, like maybe design techniques or just 
yeah, origami technology, right? And that's, that's really cool. Um, and yeah, we're using watercolor paper. So this is Arch's watercolor paper. Uh, if you've seen Levin, who's been killing it with the wet folded mass recently, uh, same paper. I believe this is, it's a rough and I, I think it's cold press. I'm not sure. It's cold press rough, maybe. I, I can't remember what exact method of uh, arches this is, but... Yeah, but uh, we were folding that guy right there. Um, and I made a pretty cool YouTube short, or it's still being made, but I'm in the process of making a pretty cool one that features this guy. So uh, hopefully you guys will see that tomorrow sometime uh, if I don't get too lazy in editing it. Um, but let's kind of get started. Um, I do have a spray bottle at the ready but i'm not going to be spraying the paper directly just because like i don't want to get my keyboard over there wet actually i should probably just move my keyboard it is a uh, too nice of a keyboard to damage so um tenkeyless uh i think it's a g it's either a g15 or g9 i'm not sure but it's the wireless one it's pretty nice all right um let's Where's somewhere safe we can put, we'll put this over here. I think it'll be, I think it'll be safe over there. When is the online convention? Am I going to San Francisco in October? Yes, I am going to San Francisco and the online convention will be April maybe. Um, let me double check that really quickly because I kind of need to know the date as well. Yeah, okay. April 22nd to 23rd. So it's like 48 hours. Uh, oh no, it's 24 hours. 24 hours straight. Last year I was up for like 18 of it. Oh, that was a mistake. But uh, <laughs> at least if no matter what time zone you're in, you'll be able to attend some stuff for sure. Okay, so one thing I've done. I, mean, I think that's the other side. I, I prepared myself for is uh, I need to start like thirds in a grid. So <laughs> I scored it. I don't think you can see this, but uh, I have markings out for myself. But this is going to be very interesting. So um, I know there's a lot of questions, but um, uh, I'll, I'll get to them in a little bit after I get this grid going because I don't want to bore you guys on the boring stuff. I think the fun part will be once we're starting to collapse um, that we're really going to be wet folding this thing up. Yeah, April 23rd. It's 1 a.m. Yes, it is. And this might not be the best towel to... Uh, with its microfiber and it's kind of sticking to the rough paper but um should <laughs> well if not we can just probably use our spray bottle now and it'll be okay um i'll try to answer questions as we go uh someone mentioned boys can you make the streams earlier uh kind of but probably not uh, unfortunately it, it kind of depends my schedule used to be where i would go to the gym from 9 30 to 11. Um, I, that's kind of changed, but I, I kind of work late, so there's not too much I can do. I'd like to be able to stream earlier, but it wouldn't be as consistent, I think. Um, okay, this is not wet enough. Um, yeah, I'm on the West Coast, so for East Coast people, it's really late, and then for people in, like, India and Asia, um, they'll be able to start at this time. I think it's too early for Europe, but uh, maybe like later in the stream, like in four hours, they'll be awake. I know Bodo sometimes <laughs> hangs out. I, I think the best time would be Saturday mornings, but again, sometimes I'm busy, so. It would be like the times I tried to do Saturday mornings, it was uh, inconsistent. 
So it'd be like three streams for a month, and then um, <laughs> I'd, I'd have to stop because something happened. Uh, this uh, kind of method, so I've done a couple streams recently. They're like once every two weeks, but this time of the night, like the people I know in person that I would have to do stuff for just aren't awake or doing other stuff. Um, so it's a, it's a good time for me to be able to do the live stream. 1216 in Texas. Nice. What's up, Liam? Good. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we might just need to, uh, I think this, this microfiber towel is just the wrong towel to do this with. It's like not, <laughs> I mean, it's meant to normally dry things, not to get them more wet, but it is like way too dry. Um, but the spray bottle, since we moved our keyboard, I'm less worried about spraying the paper. So we can probably just do that. Um, yeah, let's get this like, oh, I don't want it too wet. I think when people start to wet fold, the mistake they often make is they get the paper way too wet. Um, you don't want that to happen. This one's a lot more forgiving, but still don't want to uh, go crazy. It's also really thick. So I think this is like um, 120 pound, which is like 200 GSM maybe. It's either that or it's the 90 pound one, which is like 160. I can't remember, um, but it's not the 300 gram. Okay, and I got this a little bit too wet. So <laughs> we went from not wet. Okay, maybe now I can use this towel to dry it, um, but it's kind of okay. I just gotta be a little careful. That paper sounds delicious. Yeah, folding ASMR for sure. We also have um, uh, our hair dryer handy nearby, so if we need to use that, we can pull that out. Okay, uh, where's my other third mark? I think it's on this side. Okay, so a bit less this time. Maybe we don't have to do the, the back if it soaks through. Yeah, this is fine. Do a flip. <laughs> um, I think I, I've i done it on before on stream when my room was a little bit less crowded. My room is a little bit too crowded right now to do a flip in it safely, at least. What am I doing so late? Oh, this is not even late. Um, I mean, my old streams, like for those who've been around know that I used to start streams at 2 a.m. Um, but <laughs> you know, may maybe the audience I currently have watching right now don't know that because it was so late before, but when I was in college, the only time I could stream was again, when all my, you know, IRL pe people and friends were asleep already. And after, and or after I finished homework. So generally that was after midnight is when I would start. And then since it's Saturday, right? It's totally fine to stream till like 5 a.m. or to 6 a.m. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a couple streams where I went till there was sunlight. And I showed on stream like, oh, hey, there's the sun. And then, yeah. So this is, this is, this is early technically. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the grid is only 12. I'll, I'll give that hint. So we don't have too much to do. Let me make sure it's fairly accurate. It's not going to be like a hundred percent precise just because as the paper gets wet, it's going to warp a little bit, uh, but should be okay. What if you took someone's origami and ate it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think that would taste very good. Um, paper generally doesn't taste too good. Maybe if it was uh, an edible rice paper. I don't know. 
And then if uh, it's died, it's probably toxic. So I, I wouldn't do that. Um, halfway through Saturday right now. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, right? I was uh, chatting with one of my Australian friends. Um, and it was like four in the morning my time. And for him, it was like nighttime or evening, like the early evening. So it's like, well, I'm existing in your today, but I'm going to bed. And he was existing in his evening, but also thinking of, you know, sleeping in a few hours. And our, our minds were just like so confused. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. <laughs> we're like way off. What's going on? Uh, it's kind of crazy. Will the hotel crease pattern be on my website? Um. Check, check my website. I think it's on there. Um, I don't think I announced it, but uh, let me let me fact check check myself so I don't bait you guys. Yeah, yeah. Go check my website. It's on there. It's a silent release. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, no, no. I announced it in the Discord. Just kidding. Uh, now, read the description before you try folding it. Um, I know a lot of people, they ask me for the crease pattern all the time. And it's mostly because they just want to see the structure, see how it's done. Um, and then there's there's a couple people that try to fold the models every time, and I really appreciate that. Um, and, you know, sometimes they need help folding it too. This one, I'm not going to be able to help because it's like, I don't know, it's just too convoluted. And it's only 32 grid, but the inverted flaps might trick a lot of people who are less experienced with crease patterns. And same with the color changes, so... Uh, there's just a warning like this one it's not it's not a great design um, um, yeah so that's why I was hesitant on even releasing it but for the people who want to just like look at it and then maybe try it as a challenge you can go for it boys are you sure about the weight because one pound is half um, pound is Okay, see, this is where metric, you, metric, yeah, or imperial. This is where imperial makes no sense. I think the pound of paper is like a, a mass instead of a wait. I don't know. It's diff It's like it's weird. It's not the same pound as the weight pound, um, which again, me metric is just way better than imperial. Or uh, maybe, yeah. Grams, GSM, so much better. Meters, millimeters, centimeters. Celsius, way easier. Way, way easier. Uh, have you ever noticed a quality difference in watercolor papers? I got a cheap 100 pack for 8 bucks and it's much better than the paper I used before. Can't shape it as much as I see people doing with art. Yeah, see, Arches is special, man. It's like... It's its own breed. So I haven't tried other watercolor papers. No, I have. I The press difference, uh, like I, I used Stonehenge's, but it was a hot, a hot press. And so it wasn't like this at all. Um, and it, it didn't quite react like this. You can still do mass with it, but I don't think you can do like the crazy sh sculpting as easily just because the paper doesn't handle like Arches does. Um, it's like a lot less durable as well. Like Arches is just incredible. Um, but yeah, it's kind of expensive. So that's the, the only downside. Toyam is lunch time for my guy. Yeah, yeah, Liam's totally, uh, he, he knows, dude. All right, so now we're folding into 12 divisions. And you notice, like, I'm not getting my whole sheet wet right now. I'm just kind of getting the spots I'm folding. And since it's um, just the grid folds, like, I need them as references, but I don't need them forever. So that's that's kind of why I'm doing it like this. Um, and just from experience of wet folding other stuff with this paper is that's... It works for me. I'm not sure if this is the best technique or not, but yeah, it, it works. 
how can I contact you for help? Uh, you can DM me on Instagram and I'm not, I can't help everything, but I will give generic tips if it's quick or I can often help with my own designs. If it's help for someone else's design, uh, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. So yeah, if you have a good question, I'll definitely be down to answer. And I think a lot of people in chat can testify uh, if they've messaged me before that I'm down to help. But with very specific model questions like, boys, help me with step 60 to 80, uh, that I don't do that. I'm sorry. Um, oh, Chainsaw Man tutorial. Okay, yeah, and some things as well, like if it's a really hard model... Honestly, so the, the thing with the Chainsaw Man is the structure, I teach everything or nearly everything about that model in my crease pattern class. So that's already a better resource than asking me for help. And then once the two-headed dragon tutorial comes out too, you can get some more help with that. But um, I think when you want to start folding models like the Chainsaw Man, and what are my other harder models that don't have tutorials? Um, maybe like... Some of the dragon plate armors that don't have tutorials yet. Uh, if 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 that's like your second or third crease pattern, it's probably not a good idea. Um, and I'm just gonna be honest, like, and like like that's me trying to save you from a world of hurt and frustration. <laughs> but yeah, um, is like, and also the chainsaw man's another bottle where the honestly it's not the best design. The leg color change is completely unnecessary. Um, but the saws are kind of cool. Uh, and shaping it is kind of difficult. Um, as all humans, detailed humanoids are. And I'm trying to read other things. My exams are almost over. Nice. Working on Ryujin, nice easy origami. Uh, well, you not no because you had exams, okay. But it's a big Ryujin. Do you know the grid for the H Dragon? No, I don't. Um. Yeah, I again the get models I that aren't my own design unless if I folded it before. So if you see on my Instagram, you can ask about it. But I I can't help too much with other people's models. Uh, what's a good place to go after watching your crease pattern series? Uh, watch the plant psychologist videos on design. And it's like an extension of the crease pattern class. So you'll be introduced to like the, like by crease pattern class, the goal of it is to introduce people for the first time into crease patterns. Um, so, and it's a little outdated. There's some terminology and techniques that aren't fully correct in that class, but it's it, it's in an explainable way so that it's approachable, right? I can't just sh start off by shouting all this terminology to people. Uh, but plants class is like the correct terminology for a lot of stuff. Um, and it's going to get you to the next level. So try that out. And then... Yeah, and I mean, there's an infinite amount of crease patterns that you can try on the internet. Um, and my advice is don't go pick ones that are too hard. Like look for those 24 grids, look for those 16 grid, 32 grid maximum, you know, like insects to try first. Um, and just fold a lot of them, you know, like don't just jump straight to my square twist samurai. Um, you know, some, some people are going to be able to do it. Some people are not going to be able to do it. I just kind of be how it be. A dragon is 48 with partial 384s. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's actually wild. Um, practice. Yes, practice is uh that's a good answer too. Um, 
it's none of those honest but truthful and realistically helpful answers that people don't always want to hear. Am I going to make the Assassin DPA or the Complex one when I hit 10k subscribers, I think is your question. I think I saw you comment that earlier. I didn't get back to you. So I am going to be teaching the Assassin Dragon Plate Armor because the other version, or yeah, the base one, not the sword, not the sword Dragon Plate, the, the, just the standard Assassin one. Um, and, and that's because all other versions of the DPA basically are the same. And like, if you can't figure out how to just do the sword, which is so, it's like the easiest thing in the world to fold. Um, if you can't figure that out, you probably shouldn't be folding it. Um, but for the most part, it's going to be so easy to fold the next ones if you know how to do the base one. So that's why I want people to do the basic one first and teach that because by teaching that I'm basically teaching all of them. Um, and if you don't understand how the sword connection works for the sword dragon plate armor versus the assassin, um, just watch the crease pattern class and you'll figure it out. Um, cause it's, it's a corner flap. Like you've done it for sure. If you folded any box plate design before, um, and, and the rest is just like mirrored on the other side of the armor. Like, there's no new structure. It's just all the same. I think Plant is working on a grid pre-creaser. Yeah, he was, uh... Um... He had some ideas. I mean, I don't know if it's going to become production to do, like, really complex stuff. It's more like quick 16 grid or 8 grid pre-creaser, you know? Uh, but honestly, I think pre-creasing your own grids, right? It's one of the areas where you're kind of practicing how clean you can fold or just your folding technique in general. So even if that comes out, I think I just recommend people to practice folding your grids. Like uh, a lot of times if you're actually folding a model, you're not actually practicing folding precisely. But on grids, because it's all repetitive and it's not like a challenge, it's it's that's your practice right there. Right. And that's, that's really good, um, to do. All right. So that's our grid. And then I'm pretty sure I have the pre crease or the crease pattern memorized. Um, I think, <laughs> So we're going to, I don't exactly know if I have to pre-crease this or if I should just try folding the whole base just straight up, but we'll do, we'll do a little bit of pre-creasing, just like more reference creasing instead of actual like hard pre-creasing. Um, I think if we can just embed the paper with some memory, that's, that's all we really need. Collapsing Plants Princess, and I don't have any more motivation to finish. Yeah, you know, uh, if people have questions about motivation, my 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 thing is fold what's fun. You know, and fun might not always mean cool it, or like the coolest thing in the world. But I think having fun is more important than just doing the coolest stuff ever. And then sometimes the coolest stuff is fun to do, right? Um but you you don't really want to have to need motivation to fold stuff. You 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 want to fold stuff that's like you just want to fold and you'll do it. And I think that's a sustainable route. You know, obviously if you want to get better, there might be some grindy parts or not everything is going to be fun, but if you can push through that just a little bit, then you'll be chilling. But if you're constantly relying on motivation, then you know, step away, do something fun. Um and that helps you keep interest in origami. Like, for example, I don't do geometric origami. I don't do kusadamas. Uh, okay, I don't think kusadamas are that fun. But, like, I, I did this box, right, during the 
geometric origami convention. And this was so much fun, you know, like sometimes you just got to try something new. It's a modular and it's just a lot of fun, right? So just, uh, you know, keep your mental strong, keep it healthy and have, have a lot of fun. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I should just give this normally I don't pre-crease this when I actually fold it, but I think I probably should at least a corner. I recommend folding Boyce's Samurai in order of creation so you keep challenging your Yeah, honestly that that's a great idea too. Um Start with the basic samurais. It's kind of brute force y, but you'll you'll naturally pick up the folding skills and the shaping skills and then progress into the further, like more well designed ones. And you'll you'll get better and better. And then eventually you can tackle the crease pattern ones because they're very similar. Um, the only exception is probably the square twist one because that one's just kind of, that's, that one's pretty insane. If you watched me fold it for the first time, <laughs> like I even struggled on one of the parts figuring it out. So that, that's to say something. Um, I need to check the crease pattern here. Okay. We're going to do this on the other side. I used to be obsessed with Shuzo Fujimoto's Hydrangea test. So she's the Neo Mikisato Roses. I love his rose book. Yeah. I don't actually don't have uh, Neo Mikisato's book, but I want to get it because I like his roses too. And then Shuzo Fujimoto is, a, you know, he's actually has the title Origami Master and all of those are just so much fun and very genius folds, pioneering folds and designs. Super, super fun. What paper size should I use for age dragon? Probably like 1.5 meters, I think. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's what Gregory used. And I think that's what Grant used as well. Um, two, four. Yeah, I don't see myself doing any of those crazy <laughs> scaled models uh, anytime soon. I think the only one I kind of want to fold is the, the JSL, the Japanese Spiny Lobster. And for one, it's because like the transition units, because they're challenging, it seems fun to me. Um, and it's not super repetitive besides just folding the grid and pre-crease and everything. But the actual collapse seems fine because like the age dragon is just a bunch of scales again. So to me, it's like the same thing as folding Ryujin. Um, it's just kind of tedious. Uh, Zoonoid is kind of similar. It's a little bit more exciting, but I don't like it as much um, as the Age Dragon or the Ryujin or the JSL. Um, and like the JSL has color change. So like, you know, that's an additional challenge to, to make it more fun. Will I ever do it? Who knows? Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of time for that, but especially just making the sheet, the co nicely color changed sheet is kind of, kind of a lot, you know, I think the sacrifice would be like, oh, Boyce disappeared from YouTube for half a year and he was just working on a JSL. You know, maybe if I use a work vacation and take two weeks off, I can just do it all in those two weeks. But <laughs> we don't we don't really have that opportunity. Do you have some creases in the assassin? Because it looks crazy. Uh, did I miss a? Um. Uh, uh, the crease pattern of the assassin is on my website. I'm not sure if that was your question. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't need motivation like when I folded vinegar and I just forced my... Yeah, see, sometimes that's, that's what you got to do. You got to have that mindset. You just got to do it, right? Like, don't don't rely on the motivation. Just do it. Um, 
Now that I thought about it, I never knew it was a thing to wet full. <laughs> you know, it generally isn't a thing, but I think because this is such a simple grid, um, it works. It's a big, it's a question mark for me too. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if this is a good idea, uh, which is why I decided to stream it. Cause if it doesn't work, that's content, right? Um, voice ruins a $10 sheet of paper on stream. No, I, I'm pretty sure it'll work for this model though. Um, I was going to do my other dragon model from the 16 grid. That one would be a little bit sus, but this one should, should be fine. I'm not too worried. Any tips for GSL? Uh, do be good at origami already. Like, uh, uh, don't don't try folding it unless you're insane at folding and shaping already. That's my advice for JSL, Ryujin, Age Dragon, all those hard ones. Like, don't rush into these hard ones. Get yourself good at everything else first, and your experience and time is going to pay off way better. Uh, and again, it's even the same thing. Like. It's sure those are like the coolest things in the world. They might not be the best, the most fun. They might not be the best thing for you. So if it's if it's not, then you probably shouldn't be folding it. Um, uh, and you know, I'm not trying to stop people from folding it, but like if you're relying on a bunch of help and needing you're getting stuck, uh, it should be a, a red flag that hey, I need to work on other things first, so that when I fold it, I can do a really good job. Um, you know, and, and not everyone's going to share that opinion and that's fine. People do things their own ways too. But for me, like, uh, it, <laughs> I, I like doing this in, uh, in other things in li like in video games or even in life is if I'm going to do something hard, I want to be good at it already so that it's not hard. Like it's easy. Like that was my approach for studying on exams. Like an exam for some subjects doesn't have to be hard. If I study enough that it, everything in that subject is easy, then the test is going to be easy, right? So it's just like practice and knowing what to know. Is is That's the key. You're practicing enough. Like, why should I expect myself to get a good grade on a test if I don't know how to do everything on the test? Right? I, I can't just complain, oh, the test is hard. I was like, well, it doesn't have to be hard. That was that's my decision, uh, and and that's how I approached Ryujin as well. Like, the very first time I tried to Ryujin, it was too hard for me, and I'm like, it doesn't have to be this way. Let me just not fold it, and I'll come back to it when I'm better. And then when I actually folded the Ryujin, I even I I, I did it as a proof to myself that it was easy. By uh, doing it from single tissue, I like, intentionally made everything about it harder, and still folded it easily. It just took a lot of time, and so, yeah. So th that's that's my that's my recommendation, and you don't have to follow that if you don't like it. But if you want my piece of advice, that's that's my advice. And thanks for hanging out, Echo Song. I'll see you later. It's yeah, pretty late. Uh, <laughs> I don't recommend people to stay up as late as, as I stay up. It's not, not healthy. Sometimes. I do it anyway. Uh, Japanese spiny lobster. Yep, that's GSL. Crease pattern. Yeah, I think uh, Bodo mentioned it was the most complex model in terms of what you actually have to fold into transitions. To date. I'm not sure if that's changed, but I think it still holds true. Just because some of the transitions are really wonky. And so if you don't collapse it correctly, it's just a pain in the butt to, to fold. So like you, you need a good understanding of what's going on in the JSL to fold it. Uh, and you can kind of mush some parts too and probably find success, but you know, why do that when you don't have to? Is uh Kind of the the whole thing. Okay, now we can get the paper a little bit more wet. And we're going to start collapsing this. Um, we're going to do one half at a time, I think. 
Where did I find Age Dragon Crease Pattern? I think it's pretty publicly available on the Origami Darn Discord drive or on Google. I think it's because it was posted publicly to Flickr a while back. I, mean, I can't remember. But um, Can you design a Scarecrow? I can. Um, I probably won't anytime soon because I'm just busy with other design projects. But if you're asking if I can, I definitely can. Fearless, make one. Uh, I think you're talking about the... He's done all of them. He's done Age Dragon and the Japanese Spiny Lobster, I think, right? What does spraying paper while pre-creasing do? I thought wet folding just uses water into shaping. Now, that's wet shaping. Um, traditional wet folding, water is the entire time. But also, when this paper is dry, it doesn't fold that well because it's really thick. And so the water is making it soft and foldable. And then when it dries, it gets hardened back up. And then um, it stays in place. Uh, so that's why I have to keep re-wetting it because I don't want to fold it when it's hard. Otherwise, the paper is going to crack. And if the paper cracks, that's that it, it gets close to tearing and it leaves a little mark and it's not very nice. Um, um, wet shaping. I mean, you can wet fold like Wenjo with methyl cellulose as well because the methyl cellulose will make it act like the properties of this kind of wet folding. Uh, but it the drying is different. You have to dry it with like a hair dryer. Um, this one, because of the thickness of the paper, you don't actually have to hair dry it. Um, it just dries fast enough on its own. Um, all right. I think we do the tail first. I feel like I've already folded my region with the Sunbringer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done... that. That's technically like around the same pace. Um, just, you're not folding scales for two weeks, right? But you're doing other equivalent difficulty stuff. Um, like, it would probably, if I were to fold your model, Mark, it would probably take me less time than it did for me to take Ryujin. But in terms of, like, difficulty, I would say it would be more difficult than the Ryujin for sure. Because, yeah, again, region, for me, it was really easy. There was, there was no challenge. Or, or not, not not much. I think the, the hardest thing was uh, making the paper. Making the single tissue. Um, oh, did my camera just turn off? Hello. There's no way it overheated, right? I think I have to turn on uh, the heat thing. Let me... Uh, or maybe it's that Sony camera turns off after half an hour. Power settings, power save, no. Power off high, okay. All right, it might be too hot, in which case we can swap cameras or just let it cool down for a little bit. Um, oh, granted this, the soul blue dragon, not the age dragon. I see. I see. I just know he's done a lot of the, the crazy ones, like some Soma Cruz models and obviously Ryujin and JSL. Um, what GSM is this? I think it's, I think it's. By the feel, I want to say it's 160 around. Uh, but it should be 90 pounds in paperweight to GSM, which is uh, something. Okay, yeah, my camera is it's too hot. Didn't have this problem last time, but I'm guessing... Uh, I think it's because my lamp is <laughs> like a little too close to it. So let me let me just quickly swap cameras so we can get this back up. And then we'll be good to go. Uh, 
Uh, can I use tissue for the assassin or is it too soft? Uh, double tissue should be fine. I, I use double tissue on mine. The assassin actually works better with slightly thicker paper and thicker. I mean like 40 GSM, like 30 to 40 GSM. So double tissue is good. Double tissue is actually on the thinner side. Uh, so I, w I wouldn't go thinner than double tissue basically. Uh, Unryu, single Unryu is probably too thin. Um, the mulberry, the 40 GSM mulberry is great. Wenjo, which is 30. That's also great. Um, Since we're in interlude, I need to move things out of the way. Here's the hotel. You can have a look at it. there I think the crease pattern grid varies plant talks about it in a series uh, not too sure what the context was for that try tissue foil uh, tissue foil is not good for my assassin I will tell you that it needs to be flexible, not uh, rigid. All right, let's hope this works. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, powered on. It's just a uh, ah, look at that. All right, I think we're good to go. Um, okay, I just think the autofocus is a little bit wonky, but. All right, let's get a sip of water. Uh, oh, he's saying the grid changes depending on the model you're designing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the context, Mark. Helps out a lot. Yeah, so when you're deciding uh, what grid to use, there, there's a couple ways you can go about it. Uh, I think if you're new, you're more likely to just... Um, oh, this is not fully in frame. Um, you're you're more likely just to pick a grid you like and just try to fit it in. But you could use Tree Maker to get an estimation. And there's, I think, I don't know if it's on Plant's channel, but he's talked about it before on how you can like approximate the correct grid amount. 
based off of the tree you create. So like say you're making a human and you're like, all right, I have like three units for the head because it's going to have hair and details, uh, six unit arms, a two unit, uh, which will be a two unit river for the body and then like uh, eight unit legs, right? Um, and if you have that tree, you can you can get the minimum grid that would fit that. And then obviously, if you want details or you're planning for details, like color changes stuff, you can either fit that into the tree, or if you don't want to fit in the tree, you can just, you know, use a couple more grids and kind of guesstimate. Um, it, you could do it without Tree Maker too. You can just, once you get a good sense, you can kind of draw the tree, again, the estimated tree, and like just add up <laughs> approximately how much you would need, or just draw it. And then you can, you can kind of tell if you need more or less. Um, but you kind of need a, a better understanding of bo how box pleating works to do that. And then for other design paradigms like 22 and a half, it's going to be a little bit stranger. Um, I'm not a expert on that area, but yeah. Probably shouldn't make a weird grid like a 43. Yeah, like uh, unless it's the tr that's what Tree Maker tells you to do. I don't know why it would do be 43. Uh, for really specific prime number grids, uh, is that prime number? I think it's a prime number. I think a lot of people use it when they're doing color color change patterns, and where it's very geometric. So you need a prime number grid for that. But if you're designing like a dragon from a 43 grid, like you could just do 44, right? And then if it really fits at 43, which if you're, if it's in 43, you probably have some kind of like inverted flap. So you probably don't want to be using that. Um, like I, I wouldn't do it just to say I, oh, I'm using a 43 grid. That's not my thing. Could be someone else's thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm too lazy to, to try to do that. <laughs> I would just do... 44 because 44 is not bad the full it's an 11 and then you just divide into twice so you bump it to like you know I, I don't know anything else is fine too um, maybe if if it's fun for you to be to do something painful like that then then that would be the other <laughs> reason I could think of but uh I don't know. As helpful as designing a centipede, I was going to try 32. Yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, if I were to approach a centipede, first I would want to think uh, about, like, all right, how long are these legs going to be? Because the, all the legs are probably going to be around the same length. And then how long is the body going to be? So then I'm going to have rivers between each of the legs. You can fit that in and then try to get a proportion because if it's axial, right, if you're taking two units for the body width, you want to make sure that's proportional to your leg length so you don't have super short legs. Um, but you, you can kind of feel all that out um, and pick how, how big of a grid. You know, like obviously if you're choosing 32 grid and you think you're going to get like 20 legs, it's probably not going to happen. Um, you definitely don't need like an insanely large grid either. Um, and then if you know how to use partials, then that works too. Which, if you want to kind of see that process, you can take a look at last stream, which was redesigning the two-headed dragon. And you can see like the difference between when I was a beginner designer, or not really beginner, but a more beginner designer from the first version of the two-headed dragon which was a 64 grid and how much I was able to optimize it into a 48 grid then during that stream and also there's a uh, some even more expert designers that came in to help still you know fix some of my skill issue such as mark and bodo and, and it turned out to in burb and they helped me make a nice design so 
that's a really educational stream if you're thinking of designing something um, on the more complex scale. Your scorpion was hex pleated, right? Is there a benefit? Um, yeah, let me show the scorpion really quick. I'm going to let that soak a bit. And by the way, the crease pattern for the scorpion has been released to the public as well. Um, I think the only benefit here compared to other 32 normal box pleat grid scorpions was the fact that these pleats are natural. They don't take up much more width. So the tail doesn't get super, super thick as it comes through the middle and it fills up more space. Now, the areas that did get thick were the legs. Which I think if I used thinner paper, that wouldn't have been a problem. Um, but like all of these features just naturally go and take up the same width of paper because of the angle, like everything. I mean, it's really hard to explain without using like really crazy terms, just hex pleat terms. But uh, <laughs> the, the angle in which the pleats form allow for natural ridges and you can do just ridge pleats all the way down through the tail too. So even these are part of the ridge pleats. Um, they're just crimped, but there's not as much benefits to hex pleating in other aspects. But if you have something with, with this, you can, you can do it. The thing is you can also do it with box plate by going like using a, uh, a anything on like a Pythagorean angle, I think, but I'm not too good at doing that. If you look at a lot of like box pleat insect spikes, they're kind of like that, but they're still really short spikes. So you can't expect anything like, uh, like you wouldn't be able to do stuff like this where they're so tightly packed together and large. This, you just need to use up a whole, a whole pleat. <laughs> Well, it's a partial technically. Oh, by the way, this is progress on the two-headed dragon. Speaking of, of that, this is the first time people are seeing it. It's not done yet. I'm st I still need to shape it a little bit more, but it's really close. Um, honestly, this is probably too small of a paper to use. Uh, the teeth were not the worst to fold, but I can imagine that's because I designed it, right? If it was your first time ever folding this structure, it might be a small nightmare, but... Uh, at least it's it's kind of possible because it's a 48 grid instead of a 64. But it's it's I think it's looking all right. Like uh, what do you what do you guys think? Try using things like double tissue for insects or tissue foil. Um, I think both of those are too thick for some insects. Uh, some work like the cyclomatis mellifer would be great. You'd use tissue foil for that too, probably. For the, my hex pleat scorpion, you would not be able to do it from double tissue or from uh, tissue foil. They're both too thick. Um, the pit tip, the oh, the paper I used for that was uh, origami dough. It's not the thinnest origami dough. It's probably around twenty gsm, but <laughs> it still is too thick. Uh, that's that's more of a design flaw but you know single tissue is the insect paper super cool design thank you try tracing paper double tissue Yeah, long and thin generally means a lot of layers coming through. Um, especially if, if if they're in the middle. And a lot of crazier insects, some of them might be in the middle. <laughs> All right, here we have our river meander. Where is it on this side? All 
I gotta be careful here. Estimated this would probably be the more interesting part to fold. Okay, while the paper's wet, because this might not like this. All right, um, hopefully that stays in place while we do the next one. Not the best folder yet, and I wasted about five hours of my time yesterday on a praying mantis because my 12 inch craft paper was super thick by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people get stuck on paper, paper choice when they're big, you know. I wouldn't say even beginners, like intermediate people, but anyone just trying to, when you're starting your journey into advanced origami, uh, paper choice is often a, uh, the skill you need to learn. and. Whether that's saving up for better paper or going to my website to find sources for that paper or, you know, wh whatever it is, it's it's a skill to, to pick up um, to, to enable yourself to start trying other origami. Because, yeah, you don't want to waste five hours every single time um, just because your paper was thick, right? So that's no, That's not fun. Uh, which is why I'm making the paper guide. So hopefully that'll help some people uh, escape that. Yeah, I think by far, whenever people are not just questioning, but like some people like legitimately complain to me about paper and they get so hung up on not finding paper or, oh, there's no paper shops around my area or, you know, whatever the case may be. And a lot of these people are younger, so they don't have jobs yet. And, you know, maybe their their parent doesn't want to lend them the credit card. But, um, you know, there, you could still, there's still options with tissue paper. It's, if, if you're in, a, you know, at least Europe or uh, America, South America, you know, Canada... Australia, Southeast Asia, kind of anywhere in Asia, India, you should be able to find tissue paper or something close. Um, I think the only region of the world I am not familiar with what their paper exactly is like is Africa. Um, I just I just don't know haven't talked to enough people from there to know what their paper situation is like but pretty much everywhere else in the world has access to paper um, and I've talked to people from those parts of the world too is <laughs> is how how's the how I know all right so that's the general collapse um, we can kind of squeeze down on some of this. So that I can dry like that. Um, and then I think the next thing we're going to do is the wings. So let's start with this wing. How do we fold the tower guard? Uh, that one is not a great design. It's not flat foldable, but uh, the crease pattern. And honestly, that's as much as I could say. That's... Because that's honestly it, it like, um, that one is, if you, un that one's, there's no crazy structures in that one. It's just all basic box pleating. So, uh, if you just have to get used to folding middle flaps, I think that's, that's the hardest part of that model. It's just all the middle flaps. Um. Again, I would not recommend that to 
an intermediate folder or a beginner folder. I would recommend that to an advanced folder. And it, they're probably advanced enough that they can realize how bad the design is. <laughs> so they probably wouldn't fold it anyways. I don't think anyone's folded in my tower guard yet. Um, probably for those those reasons. Yeah, that that's again one where I won't make a tutorial on it just because it wouldn't be. It's not it's not built for a tutorial. Dude, thanks. Mark's helping out a lot in chat. Mark, you're the <laughs> you're you're the best man. Thank you so much. Mark's dropping some knowledge in the chat, guys. I have a paper shop close to me that makes some really cool paper, but they cut it into printer sized sheets most of the time. Yeah, that's always sad, right? Man, can't you make it just a little bit bigger? But. That's what online shopping's for, right? Still can't believe I'm here, but I like origami so much. I folded so much that I come to see someone else fold. Yeah, hey, thanks for watching, man. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what we're here for, right? We, we just like to fold. That's good stuff. It's the love of folding that draws us together. It's great. I, I can't believe I'm here filming myself or not even filming, like streaming to people, you know, around the, the country and around the globe that I mostly I've not met in my entire life in person, but we're, we're able to have a conversation about the same thing and show it at the same time. I think I was off screen that entire time. My bad. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I folded a variety of semi-complex and box pleated insects, typically from a 32 grid, trying to step my game up. It's hard to get out of the intermediate phase. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, if you're trying to get out and you don't have the papers yet for it, that's your first step. Let's get your papers. You know, equip yourself. Get yourself ready to, to make that leap. How did y'all get into origami? That's a great question. Uh, I'm a, I'm interested to see what people say. I'll let people answer that first. I'm pretty sure people know how I got into origami. I've mentioned it quite a few times. I see boys folding this dragon. I want to fold it badly. <laughs> yeah, hey, so if you want to fold it, you know, uh, April 22nd, Fold Fest. I'm teaching it live. Um, and there's like a, a, a fair sequence for it too. That's, it's, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. And it's something that you could probably memorize and just like, this could be the dragon you fold during class with, you know, tiny squares because it doesn't need a big square. Um, I certainly have it memorized and folded it in like meetings and anytime I had to wait. So all right, this detail I was a little bit worried about because of the wet folding. I wasn't sure how wrinkly it was gonna get, but it's not bad. Like from a distance it'll be okay.
Uh, when wet folding, doing really thin folds like this generally aren't great because uh, they don't hold very well when wet. But the paper is kind of drying up, so... All right, well, that part kind of dries. Let's do the back of the wing. Then we can do some of the wing details. I think this is one of the better things I've designed recently, though. That, like, it's a 12 grid. Like, since when did Boyce use that small of a grid for anything? Uh, I think it just shows my understanding of design now compared to the level I was in the past. So it shows my improvement, even though it's not complex, it's like, it's just better than things I've done before. I feel like that can come out more, uh, but it doesn't really want to because the paper's thick, but that's kind of okay. Once it starts to dry, it should be fine. Can you make a new tutorial? I'm making a, a tutorial. It's coming out. It's the two-headed dragon. Um, the tutorial in progress is this one. Um, just, just be patient for it. I've already had people pestering me a lot. Guys, it doesn't make it faster when you ask for it multiple times. It's, it's happening. Trust me. But like it takes time. So there's hang in there. It's happening. I wish it made it faster too, right? I, I wish I could make it the video really fast. Save me a lot of time. You can make a tower guard version too. Maybe. That'd be kind of cool. I do want to do a better spear model. So I'm not sure if it's going to be some sort of guard or anything, but eventually I, I want to, because like all my models with spears are kind of scuffed. Like the halberd DPAA is, it, it's, oh, I should redo that one. That one's awful. That one's so bad. <laughs> It's so bad. It could it could be so much better is the thing. But it's it's really bad. Um okay, let's do the thick one first. Uh, Liam says technology is amazing. True. I found your channel and subscribed because there wasn't many active origami channels out there. All the channels I watched five to six years ago are inactive. Yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Like I wish there were more active origami channels too. It's, it's hard. Like the same thing, like making these tutorials, it's hard. Um, it's a lot of time and it doesn't, it doesn't pay well. <laughs> right. So, uh, like you gotta be doing it because you want to do it, and there's not a lot of people that can do that. Um, so I'm trying to stay as active as I can because I've set myself up to a position where, obviously, I don't rely on origami for money. I do it for fun, um, and I have something else that can give me the time 
dedicated to to make it on YouTube like this to like be big enough and to be present enough to, to do stuff. So you know, hopefully hopefully more people can can join me because I'd love to like collaborate with active YouTubers. You know, I think I, I get a lot of requests from people who start their channel and they get really excited, but it falls off because they, they stop being active and they get busy, which it's fine. Like I get it, but it's just not many, not many people out there. Burp. just speed up <laughs> true yeah just just be faster you know it's, it's a skill issue just just make the tutorials faster burb is an awesome uh designer if you guys don't know um where are you going to be in the convention uh new york and i'm going to new york and i'm going to san francisco um and then i think i'll go back to mit for their convention It's like June, October, and then November. I'm making tissue foil for tomorrow. I'm going to try to rewatch a stream and follow along. Sweets. Uh, good, good luck. <laughs> yeah, after I teach it at the convention, I'll probably release the crease pattern. Or, ooh, am I going to release it? It depends. I'm either going to release diagrams, which would be paid, or I'll just release the crease pattern. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I might do diagrams um, just because I think the model is worthy. However, you can get the crease pattern now if you join my YouTube membership. That's the other way to get it. Um, is the the Discord? Sorry, the YouTube members. They all they all get like everything. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a steal, honestly. But uh, yeah. So if, if 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 you if you're if you want to support the channel a little extra, uh, you know you don't have to, at all. Like this stuff, it comes out eventually, but if you want it early, that's how you can that's how you can get it. Um, small small plug. <laughs> I was inspired when I was 35 or so by a video where Robert Lang showed his cactus. It's like, one of you said paper. Oh, that cactus. I want to fold that cactus, actually. That's, that's still something that it's one of those crazy -er ones. It's not the craziest thing, but it's definitely repetitive and kind of ridiculous. But I want to I want to fold it because, it, yeah, it same thing. When I saw that cactus for the first time, I was like, that is absolutely mind blowing how that could be one piece of paper. And Obviously now I understand things differently, but still that's, that's a reputable design. Like that's so cool. It's 3d. It's got spikes. It looks like a cactus and it's color changed. Like what more could you ask for? It's so cool. That's great that you got into origami from that. That's so cool. Folding with 140 GSM counts as working out. Uh, your fingers for sure. Honestly, folding with elephant hide will, that's kind of a workout. That one hurts my fingers. Especially if you're doing like a tessellation with elephant hide. My goodness. If you don't have a bone folder. See, I used to never use a bone folder. I, I have a glass one. It's not, I guess it's not really a bone folder. It's a glass folder that's shaped like a bone folder. Um, I never used it until I had to do tessellations for the International Origami Olympiad. Because um, literally after the first tessellation I did, I had to start working on the second one and my fingers were so sore. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, this actually hurts. Like I need to use the folder or my nails are going to start peeling themselves off because I'm 
using all the pressure on them. It's kind of crazy. I never thought it'd be like that. Okay, I'm going to try to, it's getting a little bit wrinkly, but I'm going to try to get it to dry. I should probably do it a little bit more and then let it dry. So let's uh, get this part wet. Like ideally this part dries and then I can get this and this wet and then it's going to curl this in a little bit more. Uh, but I need this just to be a little bit more wet to set in place without it. Yeah, so the, the one thing is since this is kind of box pleated, you see how the, the paper is stacking up. It's going to be a little bit wrinkly. It's not going to be like a super great surface, but um, I think just how durable it'll be. Like this, the reason why I'm doing this is I kind of want this to be a model I can have people like hold and throw around and stuff. Um, Because that's fun, especially for the younger kids at conventions. Um. They, they like that stuff, right? Okay, I'm going to let that kind of dry for now. Um, we need to do the other wing. And then the other leg. And then we can do the head. And let me see if I can angle my screen so I can see you guys a little bit better. Ah, there you go. I think that's better. You fold the cactus in one sitting. Wow, Drayden, that's that's impressive. All right, I'm gonna have to get some more water soon. I'm out. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe for your fingers, you build up finger muscles. Definitely a niche hobby. Not sure if the uh, yeah, this stream will be archived. I think it's I think it's fine. I don't think there's gonna be enough people that fold from this video that they won't attend fold fest. Like I think the people who want to fold this and attend fold fest will still fold, uh, still attend fold fest. Right. Um, I, I just hope I don't get in trouble. Right. <laughs> I don't think I'll get in trouble. Um, should be fine. I need to do this one first. Is the two-headed dragon going to be complex? Yeah, it's going to be the most complex tutorial on my channel. Because um, that is hard to fold. There's not many things I would say are hard to fold on my channel. Like a lot of them you can follow the tutorial is pretty easy. Um, a lot of times because I the way I explain it, I'm able to explain it to be easier. The two-headed dragon is not easy at all. It's brutal. It's so brutal. Um, I thought the phoenix was going to be like that just because... But no, the phoenix is going to be fine. It's going to be a little bit painful um, just because there's a lot to fold and a lot of middle flaps. But the two-headed dragon, the heads themselves are brutal. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's better than the version one for sure. Like a lot better. But in terms of foldability, it's a nightmare. Like I think if people try the crease pattern of this of it, it's it's like, like I understand that people are not going to be able to get it just by looking at the crease pattern for the first time and trying to figure it out. Uh, especially with the partials, it's like, whew. And I I've shown the crease pattern already in that last stream. It's changed just a little bit since then, but, um, yeah, it's uh it's uh, oof. That's something. And yeah, I mean, I think most things on my channel in general are pretty complex. I, I don't do easy origami, right? I think there's plenty of other YouTube channels that have that kind of content already. Uh, I, I'm like all in on the complex stuff. Like the, the easiest thing on my channel is like a 30 minute tutorial on the basic human. Which it still has a ton of room for shaping potential. So like, yeah, we, we don't, we don't do, 
I mean, this is kind of simple, but at the same time, like, I've been streaming for how long now? Um, right, so it's, it's like, it's not really the easiest thing in the world, either. How does Foldfest work since it's 24 hours? Uh, basically, there will be different blocks. So, in there, you know, obviously half of it is good for people's time zones and half of it is probably not. But if you're crazy, you could probably go to three blocks. And then the fourth one is going to be like three in the morning. Um. Oh, my throat is starting to. Um, I want to get this part done while it's wet and then I'm going to go get water. Um, but basically I think it's going to be like four hour blocks. So two hours of classes and then like an hour break and then four more classes or two more classes, both two hours each. And then, um, another hour break. Uh, and then some people's classes, like I think the first one. Uh, Satoshi Kamiya taught for four hours. So there might be like a special guest like that. I, I don't know because uh, I, I don't know who the other guests are. Um, so it, it might be like one four hour class or one two and a half hour class and then a 45 minute class. Um, so, it, you know, something something like that, I think, uh, which is nice because that allows for longer classes. Which means you can fold some, like, there's going to be some harder classes to take. Um, versus, like, the Origami World Marathon, everything is kind of fit within one and a half hours is as the longest class, and the others are, like, 45 minutes. Um, and so that is, like, uh, some. there's still some complex stuff. Like, obviously, the Shuki models are not easy, and that, well, that one's, like, three hours. But... Uh, for the most part, the marathon models are a lot simpler. Um, like last year, uh, I helped moderate and it was Kay's gear. Um, my, my man, Morsuya K, it's not like the other folders. This thing is, it took, we folded one twelfth. Or one sixth of the whole gear in like two two hours or something like that. It's crazy. Um, I'm I'm not sure when tickets are coming out. I think it's still everything's still kind of being set up, but it should be soon. It should be very soon. Um, and yeah, of course, if you're subscribed and if you're following my instagram you'll hear about it from there so i will be announcing it both on the instagram story and on a youtube community post but i think it'll be announced by march or sometime in march uh, depending how their scheduling is going i'm not too sure Planning online events and stuff is it's kind of difficult sometimes. I can't wait for the two. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for people to try the two-headed dragon. Like I think out of everything, it's been the most requested thing for, you know, about two years now. I think that's how old the design is, the first one. Um, so, yeah, that, and I want to see how people could handle it too and how well I could make the tutorial. Because despite there being a tutorial, I'm, I'm going to be impressed with people making it. Um, for sure.
Get fearless. To, oh, and Grant will say it's easy. And Grant, Grant can figure it out. I think. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I should collab with with Grant. I've been meaning to collab with him for a while now. It's been a bit since I last. I think the last video I did with him was at the convention, and it was a while back. I'm pinning a paper order on Origami Shop with some 20-inch craft paper. Is there other? Yeah, Thunder. Um, okay. I I can't take this with a grain of salt because I haven't fully tested it yet, but I have a theory, so. Um. All right, so there's some new papers on their store, not sponsored by the way, which I I should I should try to get sponsored. Uh, this this stuff is good. Um, for some intermediate insects, I think this is really really good. You could probably even do some advanced ones with the 30 centimeters uh, if you want to make them small. Uh, this is good stuff. This I think this this might be the dual one, so this might be a little bit thicker, but. This is good. And then this as well. This is the uh, the hemp paper or the cannabis paper. The thin one. Um, it's got it's in French. So I, I can't remember what the French name is. But it's in one of the new papers. And it's like you can see it's thin, right? You can almost see through through it. And it, you have to treat this, obviously. But uh, that had to be good for insects because it feels really strong. And it's really thin. And it's very even fibers so uh, and in general hemp is strong like they use it in origami dough i think so i i bought the thicker ones too because the thicker ones are better for humanoids and it's still pretty thin um yeah this stuff is i'm really excited to use this i'm gonna make like a a video on this because it's going to be kind of interesting. I can't wait for you to... I, you could see us our collab before. If, if you didn't see us before. Uh, we, we I think we even had an interview on Origami SA channel. It's, it's a lot lower quality in terms of content. Because it was a while ago. But Yeah, I mean... Um, if Grant wants to take a stab at the two-headed dragon. I'll, I'll give him the crease pattern early even. If you guys are subscribed to Grant and want to tell him, like, hey, Fold Boyce is two-headed dragon. Uh, there's also a secret three-headed dragon crease pattern that exists. It's basically the same structure. So if, if he wants to fold that, right, if he wants to be the first one to fold that, you know, you guys can let him know. And then I'll, I'll maybe I'll ask him. I got to think of a, a proposal uh, to make it kind of like a, a worthy collab for him to do, but... That'd be interesting, right? Yeah, Mark's seen the crease pattern. Oh, yeah. You see all for the new one, too. Yeah. Actually, even from the stream, it's changed a little bit since that stream. Uh, but it's it's basically the same. Like you can still see it's gonna be a lot. Um, especially to teach. Like I don't know. It's it's partial one ninety seconds for the teeth, right? So it's a forty eight grid, partial ninety six for the head. And then partial, but honestly, the 190 seconds, like if you pre-crease it, it's, it's fine. Like it's not that small. Like, uh, what is that? Like five millimeters 
I don't know. Uh, wait, wait, no, that's not right. Like three? No, like yeah, I don't know. It's it's that's close enough, right? You know what's funny? Um, I test folded it right from some Unreal. And I was like, all right, this is like decent size uh, if I fold it at this size. And then I realized that, oh, the paper I'm actually using, it's going to be smaller, <laughs> like slightly smaller. Uh, so I was like, uh, but it should be fine. Right. I don't know. I think it's turning out pretty cool. I, I messed up the wing when I'm, when I teach it, I'm, I'm teaching a slightly different wing. Um, this, this part is like, it should not be here and it should be like over here, but, um, I don't know. I, I could just like fold it in. Oh, but when people are asking about wet folding, this is wet shaping. So this is only MC shaping. So this is technically like what wet shaping looks like with methyl cellulose. Um, or yeah, you, you fold the whole thing dry and then you just shape it with with MC in a blow dryer. Origami dragon. Yes. You're not hiding a four-headed one now, are you? Ooh. Oh, you know? Uh, might have found out my secret. <laughs> Um, actually a four headed one is definitely possible. Um, the nice thing is since they're all on the edge for the most part, cause I mean, at least the two headed one, they're from the edge cause the, uh, the front legs are in the corner ish area. They, they don't change in thickness. So having four heads doesn't make the necks thicker. I think they're all the same. So it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be that bad to do four heads compared to two. Uh, you just have to do it two more times, but it doesn't make it harder to fold. Uh, the, the rest of the dragon, though, might be a little bit scuffed. I would have to change the tail structure because then the tail would be way too thick. Um, and probably have that on the edge instead of the middle. And then have the back legs in the middle or something. Um, but that, it's possible. Like, I think... Um, Probably with a easily with a sixty four grid, I'd say. I, I can't remember how wide the heads actually take up, but I feel like maybe fifty six could be a four headed. Like if if a three headed dragon fits in a forty eight grid, um, with room to spare. I think I think like I'm not sure. I, I had to sit down a little bit and and figure that one out. But it wouldn't be that much harder to do a four headed dragon. Now shaping, where to put all the heads, uh, that would be kind of strange. I, I'm not sure how I'd do that because, um, yeah, you would need to plan a little bit. That way you can like see each head enough and it's not all a crumpled mess of, of heads. Um, but certainly an interesting, an interesting, uh, endeavor to try figure out I feel like I skipped something but I did see it but now I want to see you and fearless make something that everyone will want to fold but I can't I want to see Superman and go <laughs> yeah you know uh, I'll, I've been thinking um, I want to do some kind of collab that's one of my goals uh, I, I think Tadashi's a little busy I was going to do another collab with him um, but either with Grant or Tadashi, uh, maybe something related to the origami competition too, like OBB comp and make it free, like a free version of the comp as a collab with the two. I don't know. You guys are hearing my, my ideas right now. So who knows? Like maybe sometime in, in June, like in six months, the, the collab will happen. You'll be like, oh, I remember Boyce talking about that in his stream, and it'll be from here. Now, I'm not exactly sure what yet because, uh, you know, I have to plan it out a little bit better to make it work. But at least what you can take away is I'm uh, one of the – something around that line I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, by the way, 
OBB competition is still open for the till the end of the month. I think you have like one more week, but that's kind of enough time to at least fold the model. Uh, and if you want to work on it, you can still improve it to try to win. Um, but if you win, you get origami marathon tickets. Uh, so that's really exciting. And you also get a uh, thirty dollars worth of ebook credit, or you get to choose the ebook off Origami Shop, and I'll buy it for you. So that's it's around like thirty bucks uh, as a prize. So in total, that's like a seventy dollar prize. So I mean, if you if you think you can win and you want to start competing, definitely check check that out. I believe I have the link in the description, and if I don't, it's going to be on my website under the competition page. So feel free to check that out. Um, but also, uh, the next one starts in April. So if you don't think you have time now, you can look forward to the one in April. And when I tell you that design is super exciting, it's so I haven't been so excited for a design in a long time. Probably since, I mean, the current one I was super excited for too, but so like dude, just all, all the models have been amazing so far. The designers that have submitted for being in the competition have been out of this world. Um, so they're, they're all really amazing. And I'm super excited. All right. Um, I think, yeah, I think we can do this now and then we can shape that part later. It's, we're going on our side so we can kind of visualize it together. Yeah, so like you can really see the water helping here with all these thick layers. Like this one, when it's dry right now, I can't really bend it, but this one I can really easily bend and kind of curve it. And then when it dries, it's just going to stay like this. Um, ah, thank you, Mark. Thank you. And thank, yeah, dude, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later, Mark. Thanks for helping out in chat as always. Amazing mod. Amazing designer as well. Guys, if you haven't followed Mark on Instagram, go check him out. Um, Mark, if you're still here, drop your Instagram in the chat uh if not you can uh uh Yeah, Marco Gami. Okay. Oh, what's up, Chase? Thanks for joining the stream. I totally missed your chat. Thank you for tuning in. I was tunnel vision. <laughs> okay, just see you later too. That is late for you as well. All right, I might need to use the hair dryer to dry it quick enough to hold in place like that. So it doesn't really want to stay on its own. Okay, finished making my tissue foil for tomorrow. Awesome. It's kind of exciting, like when you're making your tissue foil and either it's done or if it's dry, but like it's for the next day or treating paper in general. It's it's like, a, I don't know, it feels like a gift for yourself that you're anticipating. Uh, I, whenever I treat paper and it's like, I'm just waiting for it to dry. I get really excited to use it. Feels like a, like a birthday present or like a Christmas present almost kind of, kind of. Excitement. Nice thumbnail. <laughs> Thanks. It was uh, thrown together pretty quickly, but 
Chase is one of my friends. He's really good at navigating like handy online tools just to optimize workflows and kind of whatever general applications. Um, the thumbnail, the application I'm using to create my thumbnails, he found for me. Really, really useful. Dude's a smart guy. Uh, I know I get really excited and sometimes I use a fan to drive through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes the... Just gotta, just, you just need the paper drive. It's quick, right? Okay, ideally... It's like this. So what I'm going to do... Is... We're going to create a little contraption. Now we don't actually want to use the wire on the paper because when it's wet, it's going to leave a mark. But since these areas are dry, I think I can clip, I can use these clips um, very lightly. Oops, that one fell off. That's okay. We'll put it back. But I don't think it will leave a mark if I use it on the tips because they're like that. There's not a lot of things compressing on it. Uh oh, <laughs> it came off. Okay, maybe I did it too tight. All right, and then, and I'm doing this because I'm gonna get water. All right, we're gonna get a little bit more wet so it can be a little bit more even distribution. Sometimes when I'm wet folding or wet shaping over night, I'll do this. Um, to, to hold in place and just let it naturally dry. Uh, now, I don't want to do this on the arches because it, I'll say, it, this is not working, but okay. Well, we tried. I think um, I just need to actually have these like more secure. All right, and then ideally after like a couple minutes and it dries a bit more, it'll stay like that. So I'm going to go restock my water and come back and hope that it's dried enough to, and I can just keep working. But we're almost done, actually. We're almost done. All right, I'll, I'll be right back. Um, I think if I do this... Uh, And then do this. All right. Be right back.
Oh, I was muted. Uh, it's famous boys fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that pretty neat? All right, we're back. Uh, go here. What's my favorite model? I think my favorite favorite model. Oh, that's a good question. I think the square twist samurai is probably my favorite model, or the sword dragon plate armor assassin. This is dry enough. Okay, this isn't dry enough yet, so I'm gonna use the hair dryer to dry it a little bit more. And then we can continue because I, I, I want to keep this in place for when I do the head because I then fold it a little bit. Um, I'm going to mute my microphone when I blow dry though. Uh, that way I don't destroy your guys' ears. Uh, so hopefully this works. All right, so that did the job, I think. Uh, it might not have done it fully. I'm kind of, oh, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I think for the most part that worked. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit wrinkly. I'd prefer it to be smooth, but that's kind of okay on a dragon. Um, can I teach a square twist samurai? Uh, I think that one's too hard to teach, honestly. You can watch me collapse it. There's a live stream of me collapsing it and that can help you if you want to try it. But I would recommend folding the Samurai version three. And if you can do that tutorial, um, the square twist Samurai is very similar except for the square twist and the layout, but same grid, same head. I think, you know, the head's the most confusing part of the crease pattern. Um, yeah, very, very similar. So, uh, yeah, just, it's just the square twist areas are kind of hard. Um, but it's, it's really hard to teach. So you could just watch me collapse it and it even took me a little bit the first time to, to get it right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of those unteachable model that, that one's a good design designed by Mark, but it's just too hard to teach. Um, it's easier to explain the, like it's easier to teach someone crease patterns and show them the path to get good enough to fold that model than it is to actually like teach it from the standpoint of this person can't solve the crease pattern if that makes sense it's it's one of those models uh, which is kind of like the japanese spiny lobster um and why it's different than the ryujin because the ryujin you can kind of teach the ryujin in steps it still takes forever but you can explain a lot of it uh, the japanese spiny lobster a lot of the transitions it's just easier to teach someone like the crease pattern structures than to actually teach the model as a model um, yeah, it's, it, it'd be like that. You know what I mean? And uh, obviously the square twist samurai is nowhere close to as difficult as the Japanese spiny lobster is, but it's still difficult enough. Um,
Well, that is too much water. Okay. Shangnara, hey, how's it going, man? Thanks for tuning into the stream. Good to see you. Hope uh, school's going well for you. Hopefully it's not too crazy. But always good to see you in stream, man. I folded the Samurai version. Oh, okay, yeah. If you folded the Samurai version 3, then you should... You can attempt the crease pattern for the uh, square twist samurai. If, if you don't understand the full thing, I recommend just trying each part. So try the square twist separately. Try the uh, chest collapse and then the, the back collapse separately. And if you can understand that, then you can fold the whole thing. Paper looks thick. Yeah, this is super thick paper. So we're wet folding it. Almost, we're almost done. The, the there's not too much left in the tail. It's mostly just the wings. Um, the the head isn't even that complicated either. Now it is quite thick though. And thanks for Jaden. Sorry, I might have missed you. You might have headed out already, but thanks for tuning in. Pleasure having you chatting up. Good stuff. I'll see you later. Wait, is this right? Yeah. yeah. just the paper's thicker so i didn't recognize <laughs> the corner sticking up like this but Right, and same thing on the other side. I got a little bit too wet, so um, it's taking a little bit longer to set. But what paper is this? This is Arches watercolor paper, and I believe it's the 90 pound uh, in terms of thickness, uh, which was, I think it's 160 GSM. I think. You can, you can probably just Google the conversion from 90 to GSM. Uh, let me let me do that real quick because I, I keep saying stuff and um, I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to keep getting it wrong. Uh, yeah, it's 165. 165 GSM or 160, yeah. All right, I wasn't I wasn't too far off. <laughs> That's good. Was it a live stream? Um yeah, it was a live stream. I believe it was called The Last Samurai live stream. That was that might have been the title. So it's like 5 hours of folding it. <laughs> uh, I probably could get some from my art teacher since, yeah, yeah. A lot of schools probably have this paper. Um, that would be the, the more affordable way. Ooh, water is coming out. Probably the more affordable way of uh, acquiring it. I think one school, sheet of this for me which it came as a rectangle was around I, it was either eight to it's between eight to twelve dollars i think but some of them are more expensive based on how they're made um so it can it can yeah it can get up to like 20 bucks at some stores but i think you, you don't want to buy the 20 dollar ones because i think those are the the thicker ones like the 200 GSM or they're like specially pressed which probably makes a difference for actual watercolor <laughs> paintings but it's not what you want for origami um, I 
Uh, okay, now we just need to thin these corners a bit. What kind of paper? Arches. Arches watercolor paper. And what's up? Thanks for tuning in. You're doing... start Basically starting some of the shaping. Pretty much all the structure stuff is done. Um, so we're just thinning out the neck a little bit. And this is really thick. Um, but... <laughs> Like normally I actually can swivel fold it on regular paper, but with with this thick paper, we're not gonna be able to swivel fold it. So we're just gonna press it in and hope it dries like that. Well, that's looking pretty good. And I kind of want to make a reference of the eye right here. So we get it wet again. Oh, that is too much water. But get a little bit of water on it. Uh, I've been doing origami for a long time, but never got really complex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't always, like people who do origami, you don't always have to do something crazy complex. Uh, I like to say that the people who have the most fun are doing origami the most correct. You know, so that's good stuff. Like if you're folding and having fun, that's you're doing origami, right? That's the important stuff for sure. And then, you know, if, if the complex stuff is fun, then you can do that stuff too. And I find that stuff fun. So that's why I do it. <laughs> okay. So like we don't actually need to make an eye, but I think just that little crease helps Ever so slight. I might need to make that detail later and just like wait for it to dry and then blow dry it. But should be okay. The mouth keeps getting undone. But yeah, I think we just have to force this one a little bit higher. There we go. Awesome. Um. Where was the square twist last video? Uh, if you really want me to put, okay, fine. I, I shouldn't be doing this man. Like it's not that hard to find a video, but let me, let me just double check for you. Um, Okay, there's, there's, is there two parts of it? Here. Looks like this one's only three hours. So it might not be the full thing, but I think I do the hard parts here. So the rest of it is very similar to the regular samurai. And then that part is the, the harder stuff. Uh, and and again, if you're relying on a tutorial for this, I don't recommend you to fold it. Uh, like I'm not that I don't want you to fold it. It's I'm trying to save you the time and effort. It, I, I'm letting you know, like it's it's not easy, man. It's not easy. I I don't recommend it. Like and if you if you don't understand the crease pattern at all, like for, for real, like learn the crease pattern parts individually like don't don't rely on the video tutorial i i know it's more effort but sometimes it got to be like that you know what i mean and especially for a design that complex it's it's that's how it is it's the trade-off of more complex designs is the foldability goes down a bit but hopefully that helps um i folded joe nakashima's hardest model which was like the spider or the ant. I mean, yeah, they're not like super, super complex, but they're, they're, they're not easy either, man. So like, that's still good stuff. Uh, don't downplay that for sure. And yeah, Joe's, Joe's got some neat models on his, on his channel. I really like him. Uh, 
it was a kind of a accomplishment when I saw that Joe had subscribed to my YouTube channel. Blew my mind. I was like, no way. It's crazy. Cause yeah, I, I started by folding Tadashi's models from his, his tutorials and Joe's models a lot. It's good stuff. Am I going to make a CRMI version 5? I don't think so. I, I don't really want to. I think the square twist is the last. That's why I named it the last one. Like it's, I don't think I can improve it in any way uh, without making a completely new design. So if I do Samurai's again, it's just going to be a new design. Brand new Samurai. Um, but yeah, I've done so many Samurai over the years. Like I think... I think it's time to to let it <laughs> let it go. But the square twist is it's a really good like the proportions are great, the structure is great. It's got the right amount of details that I want. Um very shapeable. It's a blend of geometric and representational origami. It's pretty cool. It's not much more I would want to add. Like, it's already not historically accurate, right? So it's not like I'm trying to make a realistic samurai. So I don't even need to add, like, realism. Um, what's the largest grid I've used? Uh, I did 100, or I have it. I think it's 104 grid. And um, it was for a Scudigera designed by Jacob S. He's my buddy. If you're into Origami Dan Discord, you probably see his... I forget what his uh, handle is right now. I think it's like Aether something. Aether of Dawn. It used to be George of Genius, but yeah, his name's Jake, Jacob S. He, he's got a big brain on him. He knows a lot about designing increased patterns and stuff, but... 104 grid. That was crazy. That was a crazy one. Um, I believe that also was live streamed somewhere. I don't know if it's on YouTube. It might be on, it might've been on Twitch back in the day. But, uh, if you were there, you were there. <laughs> I mainly use tissue foil. Yeah. Tissue foil works so well for Joe's bottles. I think you're right, Edder. It's, it's really good for them. Have you seen the Red Dragon by Li Yu? The, the new one? Yeah, it's really impressive. Really, really impressive. The way he has the um, scales coming out the leg <laughs> in the back, that's super cool. All right, last thing to do, I think, is this tail. And it's just one fold. And then we just need to get it wet on the inside so that it can dry together. And then I think that's just about it. We'll wrap up the stream, do a couple announcements, and then maybe answer some more questions. Can you make a more complex model like Chainsaw Man? I mean, my dude, this one's already pretty complex. This one's the next one. Um, after this, the next highly requested um, design was the Phoenix. So I redesigned a Phoenix, and then that's getting a tutorial. Um, but yeah, keep tabs on these live streams because I let the subscribers decide what the next tutorials and models were. Uh, and it was between the Two-Headed Dragon and the Phoenix. So um, obviously, until I finish those, there is no more uh, for request. But keep tabs in the future. So when I finish both of those, uh, I'll probably do another poll. For people to vote on. But uh. Yeah.
Is there any other paper that would be good for a simple mammals slash insects? I think for... Did I say mammals? Animals. Animals is gonna... Animals can be a lot of paper. I think insects are a little bit more restricted. Like, uh, animals can... You can use elephant hide. And that's really cool for some, you know, intermediate level um, animals. I, I would never use elephant hide on an insect. Unless it's like a really simplified insect with absolutely no paper thickness um, involved. Which, uh, that just doesn't seem like an insect. Um but again, that very, very edge case, right? But uh, for for animals, like this is the Tilted Grid Dog that's in the current competition uh, designed by David Yaleskis. And this is elephant hide. And the, the texture is really cool. Like I was a little bit sloppy, so you can kind of see some wrinkles. But overall, it's a really good paper and it stands on its own. And like there's, there's no glue. It's just, it's just, it's just like that because it's elephant hide. Um, really good for Shuki Kato models. It'll be good for some of Joe's models. Probably not the more complex ones, but more the intermediate level ones. Like 30 centimeter elephant hide would be really nice. Uh, trying to think what else. Uh, if you, if you want fancy paper, Agua Papel is really good. That's, that's pretty expensive, but that's on origami shop. Um, I have a video on that. You can watch it. I folded both an insect with the thin version and a, uh, what was it? A Komodo dragon with the thicker one. And those were designs by, I think it was, uh, Ivan Hindoko. Uh, but there's a video on that. It's quite a long time ago, but that's really fun paper because that paper you don't need to treat, but it, it's a handmade paper. So it's a handmade paper that you don't need to treat, which means you can just straight up fold it, which is really, really nice. But that's also why there's a, a little price to it because, <clears throat> yeah. But the thicker ones that come in a pack would be really good for intermediate stuff. And then the thinner ones would be good for even intermediate insects. How do you cut huge paper? Um, I have a video in the first paper guide. So if you haven't seen the first paper guide, I show how I cut squares out on my large cutting mat. And I give some tips on it. So check that out. However, Levin told me there's, and he says in the Discord that there's a better way he prefers it. He doesn't like doing it my way. Um, and he can fold some crazy stuff. So I trust his advice. Um, so for even larger paper, he's got a method. Um, and I, I don't exactly know the details to it, but I think I'll ask him to guess star in a video to share his technique of cutting paper. Um, so I can't give you an answer now, but besides what I already said, but maybe in the future, which is like a, in a week or two, there might be a video with that method in it. So definitely uh, look out for that. And that's going to help a lot of people out and that that'll help me out too. <laughs> Cause I've just been cutting squares using my method for, I mean, in my method works. I think his just, it works better, maybe. All right, we're looking pretty close to the finished thing, right? Look at that. I need something light to hold this in place, I think, but. All 
And then I think the last thing we need to do is just to shape the wings a little bit more. Yeah, so basically I'm, I'm going to have something hold this. I think the best thing to use would be a uh, plastic wrap, but this is this should also work. And I don't want to use a clamp directly on it because it'll leave a mark. But we can do something like this, and it'll hold in place. And like basically, when I wait overnight. It's it's our, some of it's already dry, but it's gonna get way more dry. Um, like everything is still like a little bit damp, and when it gets super dry, it's super dry, and you don't really want to rewet it after that if you can. You definitely won't be able to fold anymore. Is the Phoenix complete? Uh, I haven't ref the design is complete. I haven't f test folded the new design though. So, but I, it's so close to the old one. It just has longer tail. So that one, I don't have to refold. I just, I'll just teach it. Um, just straight up. Unlike this one where I had, I, I, it was a new structure. So I needed to fold a new one. Um, But the Phoenix tutorial should be a little bit fast. It's also going to be a little bit easier. The two-headed dragon is, uh, again, it's, it's just a brutal, it's going to be a brutal tutorial. Um, it's definitely going to be multiple parts too. I don't think I can show the entire collapse in one video. Uh, it might be like, I might break it up into head collapse, body collapse, um, just because the head is so involved. And I think that's the trickiest part for people. Like, I'm pretty sure they can figure out the, the body for the most part. But the head and the... It's kind of tricky. I mean, obviously the body will take time, but it's just easier to understand. Phoenix hard? The Phoenix is going to be hard. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be that hard, but it's definitely... It, well, hmm. Okay, I can explain what is hard about the Phoenix. And then... Maybe you guys will understand a little bit. You guys get a little sneak preview. But I, th I, I think... Yeah. Um... Let me let me grab the phoenix. For for the most part, there's only one part of the collapse part that's actually challenging, and then the rest of it is shaping. The shaping is challenging. Right. So on the phoenix, the the part that's hard to fold is this section because it's uh it's a level change. To into partials and all it really is is a reverse fold on uh, like an outside reverse fold on all the layers and then a sink fold like a closed sink fold for for some of the layers but because there's so many stacked together along the edge it gets really like the closed sink is in here right so you're closed sinking like this in this space right so if, if that makes sense why that's kind of hard uh, and then the shaping, like the wings, just take a long time to explain. Uh, they're not very hard to do. It's just telling people where to swivel. I think people get a little bit uh, nervous when they shape. So being able to explain it well. Um, but like, you know, tail shaping is pretty easy. These are kind of easy. They're just middle flaps. Um, the... Uh, this thing, it's the the head is really hard <laughs> to collapse, and then it's it's harder to shape too, because 
Uh, it's definitely you definitely need to shape it with MC. I don't, you could probably shape it with some glue as well, but it's gonna work way better with MC. But yeah, like um, the head, right? Like, like, like you see in you see in this. And and this one's kind of sloppy, but to to do it neatly, it's like you know. Yeah, it's it's. I, I got it. I got to somehow <laughs> find a, a good enough way to teach that. Um. I don't think Robert Lang's models are hard, and of course, yeah, it depends. Sorry, I missed a lot of the chat, guys. Is uh, is ancient dragon difficult? Uh, it that one it depends. If you're experienced, no. Uh, if you folded it already, probably not. If it's your first time, it might be a little bit hard. And it's not that folding it is hard. It's either your paper isn't good, or you just don't understand the diagram step. And I think not understanding the diagram step is more common. I think. Um, the steps are all pretty easy, but some of them look confusing and that's where people get stuck. So it's not that it's actually hard. It's just, they don't understand it. Um, just, you know, maybe the picture wasn't drawn good enough or it doesn't exactly tell you what layer to sink behind. Um, but actually folding it isn't like if you have the right paper for it, actually folding it isn't very hard. Shaping the ancient dragon is challenging. I see a lot of poorly shaped ancient dragons, um, and it's it's just because it requires a lot of thought. Like you have to have a good plan to shape the ancient dragon well. You, you can't just fold it. it. It looks a little bit mishap just because the layers are thick. All right, I kind of want to give these some more definition. But at the same time, I I, I don't want to mess with the <laughs> the wetness, but I think we'll we'll try a little bit more and then call it. Uh, the cactus isn't hard is yeah i think like people but in, in, since you've done it or if you've done it um it's just, you just need to know how to fold one spike right and then once you know how to do one spike there's like the rest is the same um and then yeah it's just lengthy and being precise What grid is the cactus? Yeah, what what grid is the cactus? Is it forty four or something? I'll make a Shenlong two. Ooh. Phoenix is lit. Thank you. Is it Phoenix? Um, it, it's the old one. The it doesn't. I mean, it's kind of a Phoenix. The tail's not long enough, but the new one has a longer tail. Uh. I just don't have a picture of the new one yet because I haven't made it yet, so. Thoughts on Alios Craft? Uh, I've never used Alios Craft to fold something before, so I, I can't make a good opinion. Um, I think just from, I felt it. I just haven't folded it. I think feeling it, it seems great for insects. Um, for other things, the the striped texture just looks kind of weird. So, you know, maybe you paint it afterwards or something, but I think that's the only negative. Uh, I think there used to be white Alios craft and that might look better for, for stuff. Um, but the 
brown one. I just don't like those striped lines that go through. Um, but I think it's a it's a good paper for insects because it's it's thin and a little waxy. I don't think it's good for uh, humans at all because um, it's thin and waxy. Uh, humans they they prefer our humanoid models. They in like animals they like more flexible handmade papers. Like I think the waxy rigid papers like tissue foil and well tissue foil is not waxy but like a uh, craft alias craft and tissue foil um they work well for insects because insects have an exoskeleton right they have their carapace so that texture works well for it uh but it doesn't work as well for something that needs to look soft or flexible like skin or fur um uh, if that makes sense It's a, it's a texture thing. Okay, and then I think, so see how to expand it back out a little bit? I think I'm going to use this overnight to, to really solidify the, the wing position like that. And we're actually going to spray the back of the wing. I think that's going to help. The The front of the wing is already kind of good to go, but we're going to get the back wet. Only problem is it doesn't hold shape. Yeah, so you probably like need to use glue on Alios Craft to, to really shape it up. Honestly, Kami isn't even... Yeah, that's true. See, Kami, it's... Kami is... It works surprisingly for a lot, a lot of stuff. Like, it's very... Um, it's got a lot of utility. Um, and I, I think, again, it's kind of a texture thing. Like, because Kami so clean, it can do both. It can be a shell. It can be clothing. It can be a face with the white, like the pure white and this color separation. Uh, and it, it'll look fine. Uh, this is a little bit too wrinkly for my tastes. It's not clean enough. It's also too wet. So I think when it dries, it'll be a little bit better. Fusion is the most complex. No, it's not the most complex. I think the Japanese spiny lobster is more complex. I think the Ryujin might be one of the most popular in its category. But it's not the most complex. Um, Chuki's flying kabutamushi is also difficult. Uh, I think it's difficult in the same reason the ancient dragon is considered difficult. Um, and it's because people don't understand the diagram steps. I think because Shuki made a sequence for it, it made it a lot harder to actually fold. <laughs> but it's a sequence. So it's... It's nice to fold because it's got a sequence, but it versus if you were to fold it from the uh, the crease pattern, the crease pattern would be way easier than the uh, um, than this diagram steps. And there, there's a reason why even if box pleat models can be diagrammed, it's not always good to diagram them. Because it, it, it could make it just harder to fold for no reason. The newest red dry... Um, I don't think it's the most complex because this, the actual transitions aren't very difficult. And complexity is very subjective, right? It depends how you... Oops. It depends how you define complex. I, I think the JSL is still a little bit more difficult just because of all the weird transition units and the color change. Um, just having scales is not that crazy or complex. Now, Lee Use does have, like, shifted scales, 
which that makes it a little bit more complex, but it's, I don't think it out complexes, um, the, the JSL. It certainly is complex, but, uh, what's the hardest model I've folded? Uh, I think so everything's easy to fold. I think shaping. So what's the hardest thing I've shaped is probably the, uh, uh the sculpture design. And it, that'll, the answer will probably change later. Cause I, I, it's not that hard. It's just, I'm not good enough yet. So. Right. Like, uh, getting the face and the abs is just, this is just a lot of hard shaping, but. And, and it's still not the best. So like it, because it, I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's not the best. It's, it's okay, but it could be better. And that's the thing. It, it could be a lot better, but it's not, um, and so it's kind of hard. Um, but yeah, Ryujin, easy, really easy. For, for me, because I practiced so much on other things, that the reusion was really easy. Right? It's not easy for everyone, but it can become easy if you practice correctly. I still don't see very many reusions under one meter shape scales. So the fact that I shape scales, it's like, right, it's easy. Single tissue, too. Not even, not even one Joe. And I, I shaped the claws. Like people don't always do that either. They forget. They, they just leave it like this and let, leave the layers out. There's a lot of reagents like that where they don't shape the claws. Um, like my, my claws actually sit down and then I've got one that's in the air too. How long would it take you to fold Joe Nakashima's ant if you have it memorized? Use a 32 grid. Not much pre crease after the grid. Collapse is super easy, but shape. Uh, I mean, I the thing is, I don't like to fold fast. So I could probably collapse it in a reasonable time. Um, But I always like to take a long time shaping. So, you know, just folding the base, probably like the grid's going to take me the longest time. If I do a cheat grid... I could do it in like 10 minutes. Pre-creasing, maybe uh, another 5, 10 minutes if there's not much. Collapsing, uh, probably another 15. So, you know, all within an hour. And then I would spend like 3 or 4 hours shaping all the legs just because I want to. Um, yeah. All right. You make complex scales and Chinese dragons. Cool. And you're only 11 years old. Nice.
Looks like people are making some friends in chat. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure everyone can relate that there's not too many people they know near them that fold origami. So it's always cool just to make friends online, you know, even though it's not quite the same. It's still kind of cool. Especially the, the young the young ones have another people around them to help them out. I'm trying to fix my screen. <laughs> you guys can kind of see me moving my screen. Okay, there you go. Let me put some stuff away. And then I'm going to answer some questions. Uh, R for the base and R for simple shaping. It's drying. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much all done folding now. So I can just talk with you guys. I think speed folding negates the essence of work. I mean, yeah, it depends. Like if your goal is like, oh, I want to just try to fold a really quick crane. Um, then that's fine. But if you're like trying to fold a model, you probably shouldn't speed fold it. Yeah, I agree. Turkish. Um, Selvi Tear, do you know, do you know Carl? He's a, uh, I think he, he's also Turkish. He folds origami. I think he'd be thrilled to find another person from Turkey. Is he from Turkey or is he from, yeah, I think so. I could be wrong. I apologize if I'm wrong, but, um, you have to be 13 years old to join the discord. So you can't join the discord yet, but, uh, when you turn 13, join the discord and then you can meet some more people from around your country. Would Joe Nakashima models be like beginner complex? Um, so, uh, I, I think all of Joe's models are intermediate. I think his most complex dragon starts to be complex, but it's, it's like lower complex on the lower end. Um, I need to revisit Joe's channel to, to confirm, but let's, uh, move some stuff around okay um all right so yeah if you guys have any other questions feel free to ask them um we're kind of getting close to the end of the stream so i'm just gonna wrap some stuff up and then make some announcements and then we'll head out uh, i do i just want to check joe's channel though it's kind of interesting What's the most complex thing on his channel? He's done some insects. I guess there's his ant four months ago. His spider with wet shaping. Scorp uh, scorpion's actually not too complex. That spider, it doesn't look complex though. Um, it's just basic box plating. Dragon. Yeah, he had like a, a devil dragon, I think. That one looked a little bit harder. Eagle. Ah, it's a really nice wolf. Uh, Kung's owl, skull. Yeah, look. Dragon V2, Devil Dragon. Yeah, maybe the... I don't know. Maybe the Devil Dragon or the... The, the Devil Dragon V3. Or the Praying Mantis. Those might be the... So yeah, I'd, I'd say it's upper intermediate. 
and it starts to get into like intro to advanced. Um, and I think it all depends on how you shape it as well. If you start shaping it really, really well, then that's probably going to get you further into the complex. So it, it's definitely like a spectrum. Uh, can I speak Turkish? No, I can't. I'm sorry. I only speak English. Um, I can kind of listen to some other languages, but I can't speak any other languages. Steven, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Good to see you. Uh, why? Uh, because I'm, I'm American and Americans generally don't speak more than English. <laughs> Um, we, we get taught a second language in, in school, but I don't think it's as good as other countries are at teaching other languages, uh, mostly because we just don't get as much opportunity to use them. And I think that's where a lot of it lies. And a lot of school and upper level education does not incentivize focusing on your language. Um And, and yeah, it's really unfortunate because I wish I could speak more languages like now that I'm older. I wish I was able to spend more time on them, but I had to spend more time on things like math and science um, instead to, to get into college and to pass exams. I am not Japanese. I might learn Japanese, but I think that would be over five years of self-study and then practice. Uh, <clears throat> my nationality is from Hong Kong, China. Uh, but I don't speak Chinese or I don't speak Cantonese or Mandarin. Um, unfortunately, S same reason. Kevin, what's up? Is there some good origami website I recommend? Uh, do you want origami like paper? Uh, you can visit my website. I think my website is pretty good. <laughs> I've got a lot of information on there. Um, and I have a lot of links to other origami websites, but... Oh, for crease patterns? Um, uh, there's a lot of, on Twitter if you can find the Korean and Japanese and Chinese designers. Uh, all my crease patterns are on my website. Um, uh, if you're over the age of 13, honestly, you can just go to the Discord channel and then people can help you find crease patterns there. Um, you have paper, okay. Can you say, okay, I don't want to say words in other languages if I don't know what they mean, is I don't want to get flagged by YouTube or by other people uh, wanting to harm me if I accidentally say a bad word or say it incorrectly. So I apologize. I will, I will not pronounce uh, words I don't know. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I think that makes, if you've been on YouTube long enough, that should make sense to you why I can't do that. So sorry about that. Uh, do I know any Indian origamis? I know a lot. So uh, Shang Nara, who was in the chat earlier, he's an Indian origamist. Um, he's a great designer as well. We've done a collaboration. Uh, there's there's a lot. There's a the Kagazi. Um, let me let me get their website. They have a India has a origami magazine. I think India is doing a really good job. At origami um, they're creating community really well um, here's the website which discord channel can you give me the name or server uh, origami Dan um, if you want to join it you have to just send me a message on Instagram and then confirm how old you are because you need to be over the age of 13 to join um, and if you're not 13 yet just just wait like um don't don't lie or anything just just wait a couple years to join uh, but it's called i th i think it's is it in the description okay it's not in this description but i put it in some of my videos uh and selvi i i already told you why i can't say that word so sorry uh but 
Please don't spam too much. Thank you. Your voice quality has improved a lot. Thank you. I have a new microphone. Um, you see it? it? It lights up when I talk. <laughs> yeah, that's why the voice quality is better. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's got a lot of hardware inside. So it's got like uh, condensers and um, other filters electronically into hardware. So I don't actually have to get like an XLR pro uh, microphone and then process the sound. Uh, uh, it's not going to be as good as an XLR microphone, but it's close for a USB mic. Um, and yeah, it also have the arm, so it's just better. Um, it's got a lot of features to help it sound better. I, I think I still need to change it a little bit just so the volume is normalized, but it's already a big improvement. And having the arm so I can move the microphone around when I'm like standing up and stuff helps a ton. Ah, uh, Himanshu. Yeah, I've met Himanshu. He's he's great. Um, but there, there's a lot more. Um, yeah, you're 11 years old. I can't say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and please stop spamming the chat with what I already told you I can't do. Thank you. And yeah, since you're 11, just wait two years and then uh, you can join the Discord. Yeah, there's a lot of Indian origami designers. Yeah, or Instagram. Like if you're not 13 yet, you can join Instagram, I think, if your parents let you. Um, and, and try to meet some, I think on the website for Kagazi, there's a uh, links to people's Instagrams and I might not be pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> um, so uh, my, my bad if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but I think that team is doing a really good job. All right, we're going to wrap stuff up. I'm just going to, let's see, announcements. So I have, uh, okay, next videos, paper review part three. So I've got some guest stars. I kind of already hinted to this. That's going to come out. Um, I, I'm just waiting on some of them to send me their videos, and then I have to edit it. So maybe in like a week and a half, that video will come out. Um, I'm going to try to edit a YouTube short for this design soon. So that's just like something fun. Keep you guys entertained. And then uh, two-headed dragon tutorial. Like I'm trying really hard a lot to make that. So uh, the more free time I have, the more I can contribute to making that tutorial. And that's going to be a pretty cool tutorial. Uh, and then I want to plug my friend. They're going to be streaming... Um, in eight hours, I think, um, and they make really, so they're really big on TikTok. I think they have like 300,000 followers and millions and millions of views like multiple millions and millions of likes. Um, and her first stream is tomorrow, I think. I'm not sure if it's first, but she makes really cool stuff. It's not origami, but if you're awake in eight hours and want something to watch, go check that out. I'm going to plug my friend. Um, other than that, I think I think that's just about it. Um, that was a stream... Y'all, we, 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 we did it. We folded the whole thing, wet folded it. It's going to get dried. Um, now my plan for this, I, I want someone to paint on it or to draw on it. So since there's like kind of enough space, I want to see if they can either do patterns or something with it. It might not be big enough, but if not, I want to do something a little bit creative, um, with it just since it's more durable. Um, but we'll see if not, it's just going to be as is, and it's really, really durable. 
so I can like throw it and stuff. Um, and it, it should be fun, but yeah. Thank you everyone for coming to the stream. Oh, Hey, there's Levin. Um, Levin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a message after the stream. I have a, I have a request maybe. Um, cool. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, next video. All right. Bye-bye.